Christian church in Gastonia. He grew up in West Charlotte, where he frequently came face to face with racism. Several friends and I were riding bicycles. We stopped in Dairy Queen, and one of the um, attendants hollered in the back, "We've got some N words here." And um, as kids, you know, we didn't know what trouble was coming behind it, so we just left. He said he even saw it in the most unlikely place, Charlotte Boys Choir, a group designed to show racial harmony to the world, was divided by race. We practice and rehearse uh, separately, you know, sitting separately, and then we performed. Um, we would integrate. There had to be a good showing out front for the for the optics. He said he was a member of the first integrated class at J.T. Williams Junior High School in West Charlotte. He witnessed riots on campus and white students, who he said, made it clear that black students weren't welcome. Even today, he says he's seen faith leaders fighting to keep worship segregated. We've been working through these facades that things have gotten better and we're we're desegregated and um, that we are seen as equal. We haven't been. We have succeeded and achieved. We've been able to accomplish some things, but the facade is that we are seen as equals. Then he turned to the younger members of the panel. Well, we were raised to be in our places, to, to, to act a certain way, to expect a certain thing. I think in some, some degree, though, Bishop, it, it just looks different for us. Yeah. In some aspects. Um, I know we, we definitely don't face some of the things that you all face, but I, I think in, in certain levels, uh, we still may uh, face those same things. I think so. Um, but I think for us, too, we were able to leverage our voice a little bit more on certain things because we had that technology and that connectivity. When you go downtown Charlotte and, and remember the Woolworth for mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. And standing back, getting your food and reaching yeah, through yeah. you. So right. it's a certain mindset right. that you're really having to process through that you haven't had to deal with. He said the fact that they live their lives without those limitations creates reason yeah. for hope. Whereas you guys, y'all come out, you, you, you don't have that to shed to deal with. Y'all come straight with, you know, and I, I like that. What's on your heart? What's on your mind? You go for it. In the next 15 years, I feel like it should be a point where we just talk. I feel like we're not doing as much talking as we should be. I feel like we just give them hate. You know, it's, it's just it's ridiculous. At this point, we, just, we already know that we came from a long way of slavery. It's ended, and people still going about it. Let's talk to it. I think that there's going to come become a period of time, you know, in the coming years where the white men are going to say, "Let's we got to do better. I just think that there will be some sense of of change there, but um, so I have some hope for that. I, I have prayers for that. So what does doing better mean, and how can all of us, regardless of skin color, do better? That's next.